We are so glad to have you here. And you are here for the Spirit of the Horse discussion. So I'm Callie King. I'm here with Andrea Wadey. Hi, everyone. And you will get to know us a little bit better as we keep going through this um, through this next hour together. So we're going to be here for about 60 minutes. What I want to get started with is if you are watching, if you could just leave a comment and let us know first where you're watching from. This just lets us know that everything is working, that you can hear us okay, and then we'll get into what we have for today's programming, <laughs> what we have to share with you today. Really, this is just going to be a conversation um, between the two of us, but also with you as well through the chat. Really looking forward to having your feedback, your participation here, and excited to have um, this opportunity to connect with you. There we are. All right. Here we go. Yeah, welcome Molly, Elizabeth, Sherry. I know we're going to see some familiar names that coming through, so really good. And then over there on YouTube, we've got Gail and Lorraine. Awesome. So what we have for today is we have, we're both trainers. We'll give you a little bit more of our background here in a moment, but we're both trainers, have been working with horses professionally for years, and both share a, a passion for wanting to learn and always wanting to expand personally as well as professionally in our work with horses. So we just spent um, a little over a week together on Dartmoor, my first time in England, mm -hmm. and Dartmoor was incredible. It's actually a little story of even how I ended up here, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's always a story. <laughs> it's one of the things that we also share is we both believe in uh, just kind of flowing with life, and when opportunities come, sometimes you just got to jump. So that's, that's why I ended up here in England for several weeks, why we were working together, I'm doing a project, a documentary project, to learn more about the ponies at Dartmoor. And it has really been an incredible week for us. We want to share what some of the specific things, yeah. some of the specific stories of what we saw, and how we are going to take that back to our work with horses and really practical steps for you to do the same. Got a lot more people coming in. Hey, Linda, Deborah, Lisa. Awesome. So good to see you. You're going to see us kind of look between cameras because we, we've got, we're in two different places. So um, we're just so glad you're all here. Yes. So we are going to, um, we're going to be going through three main kind of pieces, sections of this call, just to give us a little bit of framework as we're here together. Um, and what we did is as we were out, and the one time we were sitting kind of behind the rock, we were watching this herd. This was the herd that we spent the longest time with, yeah. the one with the stallion, actually yeah. the one with the stallion that you've seen in the pictures promoting this event. So we were sitting there, we were watching them, and we were just throwing around some words of, you know, what, what are we seeing? What are we feeling watching the horses? What have been kind of themes? And we have three different words that we both agreed to, you know, that we were like, yeah, that's, that's it. That's what we're seeing. That's what we're feeling. That sums it up. Yes. Mm. So that's what we want to talk about is just kind of leading, using that to lead this discussion. But we want to start with when you think of the horse, when you think of the spirit of the horse, what is a word that comes to mind for you? So put that in the comments now. Just think of what is a word when you think the spirit of the horse. And while you're putting your words in, we're going to give you just a little bit of background. So Andrea, I'll let you kind of go first and just give a little, the tale of your, <laughs> your life with horses. Well, we have an hour, so <laughs> off I go. You take half an hour, yeah. I'll take the other half an hour. <laughs> I mean, I grew up in England riding. I rode from, gosh, I think I was first put on a horse when I was two years old. So I've always ridden. Um, I'm 50 years old. So when I started riding, things were different. Um, I was classed as a very plucky rider, which meant I made a horse do absolutely anything I wanted it to do. Um, which now looking back is not how I wanted it ever to be. Then fast forward, my husband and I moved to Costa Rica where we had a trekking center and I dived headlong into the relationship of the horse. I was rescuing these horses that were so broken and all the things that I knew didn't work anymore. 
So I had to rethink everything and I was very, very lucky to train with what, in my opinion, some of the best Liberty trainers in the world. Liberty is my passion. Um, that's how I know Cali. Um, I have my Pure Liberty course on horse class. Um, Cali was one of my students just for a little bit. Um, and then we work together. So it's been an amazing journey, but I, I don't want it to ever stop. And this last week in Dartmoor has been really eye-opening for both of us, which is why we want to spend some time with you today. Yeah. Yeah, and I know, you know many of you coming in here under the Horse Class channels are probably familiar with me, have been watching, and hopefully you know, finding value in the riding tip videos that I do and the other instructors here at Horse Class. So I started CRK training, what is now Horse Class, over 10 years ago. And I have been doing a video or an article every week since we started. So mm -hmm. it's it's a, a lot of um, a lot of really thinking deeply, honestly, about what I want to share, what horses are bringing to me, what I'm learning, and that has always really led me on this this learning journey. But what I love most about horses takes me back to when I started with my first horse, Scotch. So Scotch was given to me when I was nine years old by a family friend. Uh, we were living in Colorado at the time, and I don't think my parents knew that I was going to be gifted a horse one evening. It kind of happened for oh, the moment. Oh, no. <laughs> In fact, that was popular. <laughs> they, my, my parents were wonderful enough that they went with it and figured it out, and um, we had Scotch over at the house about a week later. But when I was spending time with Scotch and other animals in my life, um, it was always about how could I communicate with them? How could I figure things out? But frankly, my beginning was a lot like Andrea's of, you know, when I'm really honest, it was a lot of what can they do for me. Mm -hmm. I trained goats to pull, to pull little sleds. Um, at my horse Scotch, it was what the adventures could we do? Where are the places that we could go? Um, but there was this, this thread that I always enjoyed of just what is, how can I communicate with the horse? Like what is, what's possible here? So I had... Um, continued with horses my whole life. I rode a lot of hunters and jumpers, um, rode some in dressage and eventing, and in the Western disciplines as well. So I've always been more of a jack of all trades um, rather than going super deep in one area. But horse behavior and working with problem horses has been kind of the consistent theme through all of those different disciplines and things that I've done. Um, but because of then many years of working with problem horses, I was getting a little burnout, frankly, um, of working with so many kind of emotionally unhealthy animals. And that's what led me to two years ago, uh, 2020, right before COVID, I moved out to California to work with Mustangs at the Return to Freedom Sanctuary. And I really rediscovered that passion for just learning and exploring being with the wild horses and um, working on that aspect. And this week back here in Dartmoor um, is like reliving some of that, yeah. but also just being being with the horses without an expectation of training. And I think when we can find the middle ground, there's a lot of magic. So that's a, a yeah. you know a little bit of a long a long background, but just to give you guys the context of where we're coming from beginning this discussion. Okay, so I'm I... just going to check things. I have to put my glasses on. Yeah, we want to just check your comments yeah. here. Um, and Lots I really, of different people. Fab. Yeah, I want to read some of your the words that are coming in here. Amazing. In Sweden as well. Fabulous. People all over. Yeah. UK, Australia. Yeah, some of the words I'm seeing. Enchanting, mm. community... That's such a good oh, I like one. that one. Yeah. Aware. It's Jojo, of course. Yeah. Wisdom. Whole. That's a really mm. good one. Mystical. Love that. I agree with that. Dartmoor was mystical. Sacred. Mm. Intuitive. Pure spirit. Power and beauty. Yeah. Ah, there's Heather. Good to see you, Heather. Honesty. 
Yeah. Yep. I know. Partnership, mm-hmm. healing. Yep. Genuine. Super good words here. I love it. Another all healing. of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is. Um, it's one of the things that fascinates me so much is thinking about how horses have evolved with us and how they've been part of human life and building human society. And that's one of the themes from Dartmoor that I I learned about coming here is how the Dartmoor ponies were used in the mines. Yeah, the tin mines and the coal mines up country. Yeah, and your family was miners. Mm -hmm. So this is a story that's really close to your heart. Yeah, I get really emotional about it. I can't really think about it too much, that side of it. And, And the filming project we've been doing has just been incredible. And I think a word that I would add is stoic. Mm. Those ponies that that were down the mine were so stoic. They had no choice. And yet we heard stories, which you'll see in the documentary, of men telling stories about how amazing the ponies were down the mine and how they made the human life better and how they themselves just seem to be stoic and get on with it. It's... It's so humbling, really, with those ponies. They're incredible. Yeah, it is. And it's something that I think about a lot when I think back to past mistakes that I have made Mm. in my work with horses and redos that I would love to have is that, you know, sometimes when they exemplify that, that being stoic, being so forgiving. Mm. And I know in our horse class community, that's really what we value is doing things better and you know moving forward and learning together yeah all right so let's let's get into it i our three words yes yes we will so the first one is connection and this is a word that is so often used Mm. and then we use it in connection to ourselves, connection to other people, connection to horses, just in the space of horse training and, um, you know, horse, horse people, horse relationship training. There's so much use of the word connection, but I think often it's not clearly defined. It's not clearly understood. No, it isn't. It's used. I'd say it's overused actually, but we kept coming back to it. I'm like, but that's what it is. And I've often said connection, it's not complicated. It's not a complicated thing that needs eons of training. It's merely the art of paying attention. And that's what I saw in the herd is they were very independent. Um, It often means space as well, but they were completely connected. They knew what everybody else was doing within that herd but they were independent. Connection doesn't mean that we have to be right on top of each other, paying 100%, like you must do what I do, or it's merely the art of paying attention, and that creates a connection. And that's what really struck me with the herd, that they just epitomize it, and it's not this complicated concept that you have to learn and train. It, it's there if you just pay attention. And I think that's the one that struck me. So that's actually a quote from Andrea's new book. Wait for it. That's a bit exciting. We'll tell you more about it later. Um, <laughs> that's so, a big moment. <laughs> um, the what she just said. I want to say it again. I've gone I red. So important. <laughs> Don't worry. They can't see in the lighting. That's good. Um, connection is merely the art of paying attention. Hmm. It, that's a really powerful statement. statement. Yeah, I don't even really know where it came from. I mean, obviously I did the wonderful trek that we made the film about and and I think it came from that, that just I stayed very in the moment as much as I could with, you know, my brain chattering and all that, but it was when I paid attention, the connection was there. And whether that was, I need to be a bit different, I need to back off, I need to, all the answers come when you pay attention and that's what i really saw that epitomized the spirit of the horse for me up on the moor they all were together in their herds very much bonded but they didn't need to be right on top of each other and you know i've done 
a lot of liberty over the years and I used to do liberty where you know the horse would stick to me and we'd do all of this different stuff and there's nothing wrong with that and it was great but there's so much more to it there's so much more to having a connection with our horses that can be really independent and leave them still feeling like a horse they still have their spirit they're not being super obedient necessarily but we can ask things of each other we talk about it in my in my course <laughs> just to get in the course in there but it's really true that if we just pay attention we can be playful we can be serious we can be any of those things but we can be independent and still be together and that's what really struck me about those herds yeah and that's something that i think as humans we can bring into um, conversations like this okay well we're using we're using words and we each have our own internal sense yeah. of what that means mm -hmm. and I see so often with horses where as people we want this idea of connection mm -hmm. to be uh, I'm kissing my horse on the nose and I'm hugging him and um, he stays really close to me but if that is our definition of it it might not necessarily be how the horse feels connection and that is yeah. such an important point of the space in those groups. Like there would be times where, you know, they were close, there were mutual grooming or where there, there were two horses that were grazing very close to each other for a time, excuse me, for a time. But then they would, they would go their own way and then they would be separate. And many mm -hmm. of the horses were quite independent very in those groups. And I think as well, I mean, I'm talking from someone who's just turned 50. Um, and I know by talking to my students and my friends, you just hit on the nail where, you know, we want the kisses and the hugs. And, and I think sometimes, you know, we do want horses for that reason. It fills a bit of a void, perhaps. You know, if your kids have flown the nest or you don't feel as confident as you used to do. And, you know, you look for that relationship with your horse, but they can also teach us a huge amount about being okay with things being a bit at a distance and regaining our confidence going look they are over there but they are still with me and they do care about me and I care about them it doesn't have to be this you know with our dogs it's very different the dogs love that huggy kissy most horses don't and it's the biggest fracture that I see in connection with my students is when they want it so badly that the horse is just like whoa this feels too needy I really saw that in action up at Dartmoor. I saw how those horses, they didn't feel like they needed each other. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was quite shocking. I sat back and was like, wow, they would move. Sometimes Mare and Foles would be completely out of sight and they wouldn't even look for each other and they wouldn't even scream at each other because they were so confident in their connection that they didn't need to feel needy. Sure, if the stallion was moving everyone around or the mares left, they slowly dropped in and went, but it wasn't in this panicky situation like we see in our domesticated horses. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like that. And it's made me rethink a little bit what connection really is. And it's just that, paying attention. What's the rest of the herd doing? We're together, we're safe. I don't need to feel needy or be on top of each other. Yeah. That's what I think. It's one of the things that, I, that drew me to your training and that I loved when I came to study with you in Costa Rica several years ago mm. when we started working together is that your work in Pure Liberty is so much more about finding how to give value to the horse mm. and about creating a friendship instead of about how do I get the horse to do these things, you know, to yeah. do a circle around me or yeah. to move with me. It, it's really about first developing that rapport. Yeah, rapport and friendship and understanding about the species. You know, I'm constantly learning and I share that with my students and I learned a lot in Dartmoor about this. But yeah, I think it's just literally creating rapport um, and finding the peace in, in it all and not feeling needy. It's really easy to make, think, make horses do things or get horse, train horses to do things. It's relatively easy. What isn't easy is having absolutely nothing and being who you need to be that that horse still wants to be with you. And that's what's become my life work. And, and watching those herds has really made, given depth to what I want to teach because um, 
just makes you look at things slightly differently, I think. Yeah, yeah so true. So uh, I want to go on to the, the next word that we have, but first, it's a goodie. But first, Andrea mentioned several times now that it was her birthday. So her birthday was just last Tuesday. Did you buy me a pony? <laughs> They're going to bring a horse on, aren't they? <laughs> He's coming to the door right now. Yay. <laughs> no, I think in there's no ponies coming on set, but you can still wish Andrea a happy birthday Aww. in the comments. So <laughs> we had so much fun. Oh, the stories I could tell you just <laughs> off topic on my 50th, <clears throat> skinny dipping in a waterfall. <laughs> it happens. Not on film. <laughs> and definitely not in a tourist attraction. It did. Mm -hmm. uh, not with many tourists, thankfully. Yes. Yes. At least not that we saw. <laughs> they probably heard us. The water was very cold. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so we gave you a little preview earlier of Aww. Andrea's new book. Uh, we're going to be giving away some copies, so there'll be a way to also get a copy for everyone afterwards because they are almost ready to go to print, but we're going to be giving a few away at the end, so make sure that you stay on. That's so exciting. Um, and make sure that you comment as well because we're just here by ourselves. Actually, Andrea's husband is upstairs monitoring that everything works. I'm gonna just check um, comments here. But we're gonna Thank need Thank you, pick, Carolyn. Oh, nice. Um, we're gonna need to pick the winner's names from the comment thread. So leave a comment. Maybe yes. leave multiple comments. If you want a book. <laughs> that way, yeah, we've got your name to pick from. Okay, so awesome comments. Whoa, lots of comments. Yes. Thank you for all the birthday wishes. Yeah, it's been crack up. All right, do you wanna introduce the next word? Repose. I know people are probably going, what? Repose. It's a great word that means like harmony, peace. Oh, we looked up so many different references to it, didn't we? But repose was something that just, that herd, that was a classy herd, wasn't it? Like they just had this centered repose. They flowed together everything felt like it was in harmony even when people when horses got told off even that it was a split second and it was over and the repose was back the still point um it was something that was really interesting because as horse trainers and instructors we see people fighting and arguing with their horses for hours for hours being with your horse and having repose and having connection and flow, it doesn't mean that there's not a framework in that, that there might be boundaries. Boundaries is an iffy word sometimes because people can be very rigid about it. My boundaries with my horse move all the time, but there are, they are there. And we saw moments of just beautiful repose when the horses were eating. For, and let me tell you, they eat so much <laughs> don't i don't want to hear any more from students people going my horse won't do anything but eat we sat and watched them maybe lift their heads twice like trying to get photographs with their heads up it was impossible they just ate but there were moments where there was a ripple in the pool where a horse went too close to a stallion or a stallion was uninvited and there would be these m explosive moments and it was done. It was over. No one held a grudge. No one got upset and then, oh, they don't like me. None of that happened. They went straight back to repose. It was incredible. It was incredible for me to watch. Yeah. Yeah, with the grazing, you know, of course, sure. different, different herds, different times of the year could provide different context. But when we were out there and I was doing a lot of photography of the horses, and it made me really aware of it because I would be there. The first two days, I just took a lot of pictures because I was excited to be out there. And then I pulled them up on my computer at the end of the day and I said, I only have pictures of horses eating grass. Yeah. It would be nice to have pictures of horses with their heads up. Yeah. So, so I would be on one horse and I would wait and I would have to wait for a moment that he might put his head up for a second to look at something and then right back down to eating. Uh, it was really hard to get pictures with their heads up. So it, 
it was a, that might be my biggest takeaway is mm. just the amount of time that, you know, the kind of, these horses in this context with the food that they had, which was a pretty rich looking grass, it was short, but it was pretty rich looking in most of the areas we were in. I mean, they were just grazing, 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 and then yeah. they would take a, a nap break, uh, but there was not a lot of activity. Um, there were there was some activity with the foals, so that was. Um, that they was were fun. busy. Yeah, they yeah. were playing. They were amazing, weren't they? Do you remember that one foal? Talk about the spirit of the horse. I'm not sure that I would want him as a partner. He was exciting to watch, but. He did not care what the rest of the herd were doing. He didn't care. His head would come up and he would be gone. And I mean completely out of sight of the rest of the herd. And he was young. He was only a few months old. He would be gone, running around, doing his own thing, flying back, barging into other horses. And then he decided he wanted to hang with the stallion. He wanted to hang with the big boys. And the stallion, to be fair, was very good with him. But to see all of these different personalities amongst the foals, you could kind of get an idea of what they were going to be like when they're older. Mm -hmm. And that really got me thinking about slowing down. Throughout my course, we talk about slow down, slow down. Humans go way too fast. But really slow down, slow down and understand who is my horse? Who is my horse? What's the spirit of my horse? Um, and how can I adapt? To fit that horse because when I was looking at all those different foals and thought if you only do one way of training 99% of those foals would fall through the cracks because it wouldn't suit them it wouldn't suit their personality and that's where we can have repose we can have calmness we can I, I liken it to water flowing like a river and being adaptable. That was all the things that I saw in the herd. But I related that to how we can be as horse people, that we need to slow down, that we need to spend a bit more time engaged in whatever it is that we're doing. We're not eating grass, but if we're watching our horses, really be there. Don't be looking at your phone. Leave your phone in the bag. We're constantly taking photos. We even did it ourselves. You know, we did it ourselves, but if we can have more repose and flow like that water in a river, you'll start to see more things in your horse and go, I know what to do for that. I know how to adapt and the answers will come to you if you slow down and pay more attention. And, and that repose in the herd really, really stuck with me of like, I need more of that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And with working with every horse, with looking to see every horse as really the individual that they are and looking to truly see their unique spirit come through, it gives us so much possibility in each moment that when we go in and we just have a, a plan for what needs to happen or we have really big expectations for that day or we get a horse and we instead of thinking about what are they suited for what do they want to do we just think he's got to fit into this mold yeah. he's got to be my trail horse or mm -hmm. he's got to be my jumper because that's what i bought him for but instead when we can when we can flip that and we can really look at you know what does this horse need on this day in this moment even if it doesn't necessarily fit with what our plan was it can open up a whole new world and even if that world is mm -hmm. just a few moments of peace, of repose, mm -hmm. of um, looking at things, of exploring together, that can be so much more valuable than whatever it was that we thought we need to accomplish. So someone just wrote on the comments, sorry, I couldn't see what your name was because I can't really see. <laughs> but I saw that they said not wanting anything. And that's so, I mean, it can't always be that way, but we can spend a lot of time not wanting anything and we saw that in the herd in bucket loads they rarely wanted anything from each other and that kind of got me thinking well how does it feel to them when we constantly want something constantly want something stand here give me your foot enjoy grooming whether you do or not stand still while i tack up stand still while i ride everything we want something 
I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, we want something. When we watch that herd, maybe 1% of the time, the herd wanted something from one of the other horses. So how must that feel to them? But I think there's a way through this. I, I do, I do think we're destined to keep training horses and, and be with horses, but I think we need to look at things differently. And, you know, that's what we start with in Pure Liberty is build a foundation that you can then build your house on in whatever form of training you want to do. But perhaps you'll look at things with a bit more repose, with calmness and peace and, and then make a plan instead of just constantly wanting something from our horses. I think for them, I, I think mentally it just shuts them down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we had a comment come in here from, let me just find it again, um, from Daryl about, he said, I love hearing your boundaries change and adapt. And I was thinking actually when you said about the boundaries, you know, an example of boundaries can even just be contextual. So if you have a halter and a lead rope on your horse, the boundary is going to be different than if you're in sure. a big paddock and playing at liberty. Yep. Uh, or if you're riding, the, the boundary is sure. going to be different. So that can maybe just be contextual, that boundary mm. difference. And that kind of leads to the next bit, actually, even though it doesn't sound like it does, but we talked about this, didn't we, the boundaries bit? Freedom. That was our third word, freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to me, the freedom can come first, actually internally for us, of a freedom from expectation and a freedom from mm. should. Yes. Um, and this is something that comes up with a lot of the students that I work with, especially in uh, my confidence course, because there can be a lot of shoulds. Well, I've been riding for six months. Mm. I should do this. Or, you know, I bought my horse and he had this experience, so we should be further along. Mm. And freedom can start with just letting go. Oh. That's exactly right. I think free yourselves up because it just puts so much pressure on you. And the freedom that we saw in the herd really gave me pause for thought because they were completely free. They could do whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted, but it was within a framework. And the reason I know this <laughs> was because I got charged by the stallion. <laughs> because I got too close, so it's humble pie time for me. Um, it was very, very interesting. It was the black stallion in the picture, and I had positioned myself quite far away from them, to be fair, but the herd was shifting. And it's funny, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit. When we first went up to Dartmoor, I think perhaps Callie, more than me, is, is able to sit completely in peace at a distance and watch. And I was like, I think I want to interact a little bit. Like, they're coming over and I want to interact. I soon put that to one side. The, the, as the hours passed and, and I, the excitement just wore off, I was able to find more repose and be quiet and still. And I put myself off to the side, but the herd was shifting. And the stallion had put himself between me and the mares, therefore curtailing a little bit their freedom. Okay, they were still free to go anywhere, but they weren't free to come close to me. So that's an example of a boundary or within a framework. They could make because the battery was wearing out, I believe. But I think we're back. Can anyone just let us know if we're back on YouTube? Sorry, guys. <laughs> I think we're back. Yes, we're back on. Okay, wonderful. Dodgy cable, see. Yeah, so the freedom that we can give our horses does not mean that horse is going to take advantage of you. It doesn't mean you don't ever ask it to do anything and it's just completely free. That, that's not reality. And I think that it's often, you said it right at the beginning, oftentimes the answer lies in the middle. You know, Total, total freedom, do whatever you want to me or with me, without me on one side or a very, very rigid framework on the other. And I think the answer is somewhere in the middle. And we saw that with the herd. They were free to do what they want, but there was within a framework. Mm -hmm. That really, really got me. 
Yeah, that can even, you know, a simple example of that with riding and with schooling is that, you know, you might um, it, take up your reins, take a contact, ask your horse to do something, whether it's, you know, going into a pattern, whether it's, okay, we're going to do this leg heel and shoulder in and do these movements, but then letting the reins out and like really letting the reins out and just resting for a few minutes, letting the horse then take in their surroundings, do whatever he needs to do with his body, you know, stretch his neck down, mm -hmm. and then you pick up and you continue. But, you know, staying, if we want too much control, well, really it ends up being a lesion anyway, even with yeah. our horses. Um, yeah. But when we want too much control, it, it changes the relationship between us and our horse. And we, when we can allow that ebb and flow of the, who is leading the moment and, um, you know, when we can follow our horse's lead, that's another thing that you yeah. talk about in, in pure liberty. Shared leadership. Yeah, yeah, it just, it creates such a richer dynamic between us and our horses. Yeah. And I, we saw that in the herd. You know, that was very much the spirit of the horse. There wasn't, they shared leadership. Those horses had different roles. It's not just the matriarchal mare and the stallion being the leader. You know, people always say, I've got to be the head mare. I, I don't see it that way. You know, and we noticed they were taking turns who was kind of looking out. The stallion did do a lot of the guarding, admittedly, but it kind of was for his own reasons. <laughs> like he wanted to keep the other stallions away. And I noticed amongst the mares, you know, they would switch on who was paying attention on the outside environment. And, and that's something that we do in the course is we learn how to, how to be that and share the leadership within that. It's not all our way and it's not all their way either. Um, there's a middle ground to this and that's what I think is really important because people often go, well, you know, I want to do pure liberty, but, but I, don't, I can't ask my horse to do anything. It's like, yes, ask him to do lots of things, but interchange it with them being allowed to be a horse. Let them be a horse. Let them eat the grass. I use grass eating all the time in my training. It would be, hey, could you do this for me? Great, let's relax now and you can eat grass. And you know what? My horses don't die for grass. They don't drag me to the hedge because they know at some point we're gonna go there anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you know that your, a horse likes to eat for up to 18 to 20 hours a day, don't go and ask them to concentrate solely on your idea for two hours and not expect there to be some kickback because that's not freedom. And we can have freedom within a framework. I really believe that. Yeah. yeah. So it's funny, yeah. after the stallion, after he charged you, um, he went and laid down. So <laughs> wore him out. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> that was quite scary for a second. It's like, whoa, you might be small, but you're powerful. And that's also a thing. We make mistakes and it's okay. I saw the herd drifting towards me and I got the warm fuzzies when what I should have been doing is backing away and I know this stuff. So it's like, it's not a mistake, it's a learning curve. It's like, okay, he, he actually at many times was closer to me. It was because the filly came close. He's like, no way, that's not okay. And, and I learned and I changed it. And that's what I say to you, you know, experiment, change things, have freedom within your own training. And in Pure Liberty, we massively advocate that. I'll say a lot of times to the students, they'll say, should I do this or that? What feels good? What feels good to you? Allow yourself the freedom. Use the repose to stay nice and calm. Keep, create the connection by paying attention and then make a decision. And if it's not right or it doesn't work, you know, we're not talking about doing ridiculous things that make you unsafe, like getting too close to a stallion in a feral herd of horses. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But experiment with it. You know, it's, we actually have an exercise as well, don't we, for each of those yeah. things. Yeah, and that's the, I want to go into that next. We're going to share exercises because when we were brainstorming about doing this call and then what we promised you was we want to make this practical. So it's not just discussion. It's not just sharing mm. about things that we saw but that it's actually, okay, how can we take this and how can we um, move forward in applying this in a really practical way in the situations that we have with all of our horses at home, whether it's your own horse or your school horse. So we're gonna do that next. Um, also, we're gonna have the book giveaway 
And when we were out there with the horses, the other thing that we, um, that we came up with, because we're always thinking of you, our community, our students, and wanting to you know, find new and creative ways to work together. So we have an offer that we're gonna make as well at the end of the call. So if you wanna hang on um, through the whole call, that's what we've got coming up. We've got lots of comments too, I think, which we may, some of the comments we'll probably have to answer after the call, but we will try and get to everybody. Yeah, yeah, I love, thank you so much for everyone putting their, putting their comments in. So let's go through the exercises. Yes, they're very easy. Anyone yeah. can do them. Um, connection. We already commented that connection is nothing more than the mere art of paying attention. So that is your exercise observation. Yeah, and a, a way to observe that can go even a little deeper than just like sitting and looking with your eyes is to, to practice going through your senses. So mm. taking a moment and, and looking, but looking without a focused eye. So not sitting out there and just you know, staring at your <laughs> horse, but um, with an open eye and seeing, okay, I see my horse, I see green grass, I see a bee. I see the sky, whatever, whatever comes into your awareness, just allowing it to come in instead of an outward focus. And then you can go through, you know, what is the things that you're hearing? Um, what are you smelling? Even tactile, you know, feeling the breeze, um, feeling your clothes, feeling your feet in your boots. It's about widening the senses almost, isn't it? Yeah. Of not acknowledging it, but widening it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so that's a way to practice the idea of awareness. Well, and that's what the horses do. And we saw them smelling. We saw their ears constantly, even when they're grazing. They're paying attention. They know what's under their feet. They know where their friends are without being in an obsessive way. That's observation. Okay, so it's not just staring at the horse. It's the whole picture. Watch what they're like in the herd. Um, because you're also going to see things that you think, wow. I think my horse is really happy in his life, in his herd. Maybe he isn't. And you'll be able to make changes from that purely by paying attention and watching. I think it's very valuable. So that's exercise one. Exercise two is repose. So calmness, flowing, moving together. One of the first things we tend to do with a horse when we put a halter on is what? Walk in a straight line. We didn't see a lot of straight line apart from when the stallion was running at me. Um, that was a straight line. <laughs> but that makes our point entirely. That's attack, okay? Straight lines, pew, get to your target as quick as you can. That's what we do as humans all the time, isn't it? We walk with straight lines, horses don't. We want you to practice making curvy lines. Yeah, and, and part of what can help with that is Honestly, it's kind of the same theme flowing through these exercises. Because if you're aware of your senses and when you're with your horse, you allow yourself to be um, kind of pulled by different things around you. Like, oh, let me go smell that flower. Mm. Or I'm going to walk over here and see what this grass feels like under my feet. It sounds kind of silly when we talk about it here, but it can be an it's incredible way. It's, it's exactly what the horses do. And honestly, it can be an incredible way to go out when you're on a walk, you know, walking down a path, instead of just whoo, zooming down the path with your thoughts in your head, like be part of that environment that you're in and then doing that with your horse is actually kind of what the third exercise is, the adventure. Yeah, it is. It leads us to the next one, which is in the freedom section, which is go on an adventure with your horse. I can't tell you how this feels. I want you to go out and experience it because you will start to see the more you do this, your horse is gonna be like, what changed? I really like being with you. So going out on an adventure, what I tend to do, as long as the horse is okay with it, is I'll be on a halter and lead line, or at liberty, depending on what level you're at. I keep the lead rein loose, and I put my arm over my horse's back, or I just walk beside him, and I go, over to you. Where do you wanna go? Again, it's back to that framework. Having a framework is okay. You're not gonna let him wander out to the main road. That would be silly. We're not gonna do that. And you might find, oh, all he wants to do is eat grass. Okay, do that with him. And then every now and again go, my turn. Let's wander over here and see what herbs are in the hedge. 
One of my favorite things to do on my adventure walks with my horse is watching what she picks out of the hedgerow. Mm -hmm. For the most part, our horses are kept in monocrop fields. It would blow your mind when, they, you know, one day they'll be picking, we have these things, you know, sticky buds, cleavers. The horses will eat them like crazy. The next day they don't want them. That also, I log it and go, oh, I can use those as treats if I want to give my horse a gift. So the adventure is such a big thing in the horse's world. We also watched how much the herds moved. Those are cable, sorry YouTube. Um, I walked from one side of Costa Rica to the other with my dear friends Elsa and Liana. Um, and I talk about it in the book, book plug. And how much horses move and how much they love to move. So even if you're in a setting where you don't have many trails, you can still create adventure walks. You can make like a little treasure hunt that you go and find things with your horse around the arena. If you can only go in the arena, I hope you can go further afield. Let the horse choose the direction. Let them choose when you stop and start. Doesn't mean that you don't get back and perhaps tack up and go for a ride. But get into their world. You know, just join them in their world and see where it takes you. Honestly, I think it will blow your mind. You'll also find that you might be lacking in repose. I think we've all had that where you think, oh, I wish they'd do something. Mm -hmm. But you realize you will learn so, so much and that all these exercises join into each other. You will do observation while you're on your adventure. You will have to practice repose to be more patient. You might find that your horse encourages you to be calmer and walk in less straight lines. They all interlink. I really want to hear how you get on and let whatever comes up come up if you feel frustrated just laugh at it just be like oh yeah check that out so we want to now hear again from you and we'd love to know one thing that was a big takeaway for you listening to this and it might mm. not even be something that we said it might be something that was your own insight just yeah, you know, got kind triggered. Of, yeah being in the space mm. listening to what we were saying so yeah, I want to know that would be cool. Think about that. Put that in the comments. Um, Andrea is going to do a silly dance. Want to distract you while I plug in this cord. <laughs> we, I can't tell you totally off topic how much we laughed in the last week. You know, the last two years for everybody has been super, super challenging. I know from a, a personal level, my whole life changed. Um, so, being able to go out with a friend, of course there were horses involved, and laughed so much. Callie did jump naked into a waterfall. Um, of course I didn't. Uh, she did that. We did <laughs> headstands in the middle of the moor. There were two of us, and there's a photo of two heads above the water to prove it. <laughs> Busted. Um, we did headstands in the middle of the moor. Hers was more successful than mine. And we just laughed and we just wanted to say to everyone, you know, welcome back after, you know, a really, really difficult two years. Can you see my husband's head? Just a little peeking around. <laughs> just peeping around the corner. He had to herd us through Dartmoor for nine days. I'm sure it was utterly exhausting. So rounds of applause. I'm not quite sure. We'll find out in a few minutes. Can someone oh, no, send us a, a thumbs up on YouTube if you can hear us. It's all unraveling now. <laughs> okay, what comments? I'd love to see if anyone had any thoughts. Yes, uh, Patricia, connection is observation. That was a big one for me when I stumbled on it. Molly, walk along with the horse and let them choose what to do, and then it's my turn. Yeah, and take a turn. You've earned, you know, you deserve to be heard as much as they do. Yeah, Kit, the horse's independence while still being connected. I think that was my biggest take home. I already knew this stuff. I've studied it for a long time, but I really saw that in action with that herd as well. We saw many herds, but particularly that one. Yeah, I love this. Mo, get into their world. So many good comments. Yeah, definitely as you're, as you're watching, scroll through the comments to read the, the most of them that you know, we don't have time to read out here. But I, I see some of my Pure Liberty students on here as well. So hello and thank you. And I'll be definitely adding more of what I've learned into the course. So yeah. yeah. 
So what would you say is the one thing that was the biggest learning for you in, in our past week? There's been so much, but I think for me, it's that I don't ever want to stop learning. I learned so much. I'm 50 years old. I started with horses when I was two. And I never, ever want to stop learning because I learn every single day. I learn from my students and sitting, having the most amazing opportunity to observe the feral ponies. And trust me, you know, people go, oh, they're not really wild up there. Oh, some of the herds we got to, you couldn't have got close to them. They were very, very feral or wild or whatever you want to call it. And I learned so much from them and I learned what I can bring back to my students and how to apply it in everyday life. Because it's all very well going, well, that's all right. They're out there on, I think it's Dartmoor's 365 square miles or something. And they are in certain areas. We don't have that set up. So what I was learning myself is how can we bring that into everyday life? And, and I think we can. I, I do think we can. We can learn from it. So that's my take home is never stop learning. Mm -hmm. What about you? Yeah, mine was, and we discussed this several times throughout the week, walking around with a camera and looking for the smallest moments of beauty. Oh, yeah. Whether it was with the herds um, and just looking for that right moment, you know, watching the horse for five minutes to capture when they would look up into the distance. Or whether it was just walking along a trail and being like, oh, I want to stop and take a little mm. picture or video of that flower. Mm. Being that that was a, you know, part of what we were doing for the week. But bringing that attention to the yeah. smallest details of beauty. And then I started seeing them everywhere. I mean, we That's were- That's what I was gonna say. The more we focused on the beautiful things and we made it like an exercise, didn't we? You just saw it everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Mm -hmm. Didn't you find that a bit with laughter as well? The more we started laughing, because we were talking about this. I know this is a bit off topic, but we were talking about this, about how often we say, oh, that was funny, but we don't actually laugh. Half the joy is actually laughing. We did so many ridiculous things, which you will probably see in a blooper reel at some point, because my husband caught, captured most of it on film. The more we laughed, <laughs> I mean, we could start giggling now. We literally couldn't stop. And it's a bit like that with beauty. And I sometimes think, you know, we miss that in our horses if we're not paying attention, the sheer beauty of them. It's amazing, it just blows me away. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. There's still gonna be probably inopportune moments for me, this always happens, where it won't be the ideal time to start laughing, but I think of something funny that happened and then I just start laughing. Yeah. Uh, but that's a beautiful thing, you know, that's a good problem. To have. <laughs> it's, it's gonna happen a lot after this week. There <laughs> were so many funnies. Yeah, it was amazing, but I wouldn't change it for the world. The whole thing was an amazing experience. Yeah. Well, here's where we want to bring this back to you. So, Andrew, you mentioned about your your takeaway to never stop learning, mm. and we want to bring this back to you as our students here as part of the horse class community. So, uh, we have Pure Liberty with Andrea. This is Andrea's online course that we created together and has been one of the most popular programs at Horse Class and is really, to me, it's a fundamental part of not only our curriculum here, but of importance for any rider, any horse person. It doesn't matter what level you are, it doesn't matter if you're a really accomplished rider or if you're working with a school horse and you started taking lessons a few months ago. What Andrea teaches in the Pure Liberty course is the the foundation and the ex the foundation of understanding a behavior because andrea is a behavior consultant too she didn't mention that but she is a behaviorist <laughs> yeah yeah no. so it, it's really that foundation but then it's the little exercises to take these concepts we've been talking about and to you know really implement them with you and your horse yeah and i really do believe it doesn't matter whether you ride western whether you don't ride, I have plenty of students that don't ride. I have dressage riders, show jumpers, trail riders, western riders. It doesn't matter what you do. It's about creating a deep understanding, an unbreakable bond and connection 
with your horse where things at liberty become effortless. And then when you do tack up and you get going and you go riding, you have a liberty mindset and we talk deeply about that. And what I hear a lot from my students is they go, God, I just feel so much relief that I can just let go and stop worrying about being so much in control. People think, oh, control is gonna keep you safe. Control is an illusion. You can only control something that wants to be controlled. Why not come at it from a friendship angle? You know, I've just had, Callie's a dear friend of mine. I didn't have to control her on holiday, on our, well, it wasn't holiday, we were working, it felt like a holiday. <laughs> it's not about control, it's about having a language that both of you can understand. Um, I'm not expecting you to be like a horse. You're not a horse, and the horse knows you're not a horse. So when we say think like a horse, I don't mean pretend you're a horse. Just understand them. And I can give you so many ways where you can deepen that bond and create a connection where the rest of your horse life together becomes effortless. And you will understand why your horse does certain things and what you can do to help them make different choices and for them to trust you deeper than you could ever imagine. And I'm, you can tell I'm super passionate about it very hands-on with my students and yeah I just want to help you build this foundation that you can then go on I see my students from a few years ago and I'm like check them out what they're doing and they all say it comes back to this foundation of having a pure liberty connection to then go on and achieve all the dreams you have yeah yeah absolutely so part of when we were out there and we were we were scheming about a, a special package that we could put together coming out of this week together. Because um, we knew that we wanted to share this with you with the Pure Liberty course. Like, it was such a magical experience. I feel like I didn't even write it. It's, um, sorry YouTube, you are back with us. We'll catch you up on the little bit that you missed there. But um, writing this book was so special to me and to share it with you. I didn't actually, when I wrote it, I wasn't sure it would ever be a book, but it's here. Yeah. So excited. Well, when I read this, so this has been months ago now that Andrea sent me the first manuscript as soon as she finished it. And uh, I, um, I had it on the plane with me and I figured, okay, I'm gonna, um, I need to make sure I look at this, you know, to get back to Andrea, but I had lots of other work that I wanted to do on that plane ride. I started reading mm -hmm. and I spent the rest of the six hours of that ride just devouring the book. So what's, what's really unique is Andrea has an incredible writing style and what she's done in this book is the chapters go back and forth where one chapter is Andrea speaking and telling the story and then she's telling that story from Zeus, from her horse in this adventure, from his perspective. And that back and forth is absolutely incredible. Just the, Thank you. the richness that that brings you really did a fantastic thank job with you. this. Thank you. Well, I hope I hope people enjoy it. Yeah, so this is literally the first time that we have spoken publicly about the book, the first time that you're seeing the cover of it, and it's not even out at all for the public for pre-order. It won't be out for pre-order for several more weeks, but for everyone that joins Pure Liberty, you're going to be getting the very first copies of the book in the first printing run of these, and Andrea is going to be doing a book club with you. So this is going to be just for Pure Liberty students because you'll have this I'm space excited about that. Yeah, to be talking about. Um, and it's, it's going to be amazing. So that's going to be a four part series. Um, it will start when you have the book and you will be included in that for free as part of, um, part of Pure Liberty. And that'll be a live book club with me. So you better ask questions directly. And we'll be talking about training concepts um, we're going to really dive in deep on the book club. Mm -hmm. We probably just need to catch up YouTube a little on, on the beginning part of, of the offer. So we're going to also do a relationship assessment where you can fill in a form, all different questions about your relationship with your horse, and then you'll have a video call with me to talk about you and your horse. Yeah. So you can get all the details at purelibertycourse.com. There's two options to join the course. You can join um, for $97 a month for just six payments, and the course is lifetime access. So yeah. either payment plan that you choose, once you have joined, you have access forever. So six payments of 97, getting started for just 97 a month, or you can pay for 497. 
So again, get all the details at purelibertycourse.com. You can also send us an email, info at horseclass.com, and we can build the information for you there as well. So because so much of this is honestly, you know, Andrea being really generous with her time at doing the, the videos for the relationship assessment, doing the group call for the relationship assessment coaching, and then doing the book club with the book. That's why we have this offer, this package of Pure Liberty is limited just to um, the next five days. So we're closing on Wednesday, Wednesday. of next week. Yeah. Um, and also what is included with Pure Liberty is, is the ability to watch the documentary that was made on this trek. So you'll have that as well when you join. It's the course, it's the documentary, um, there's a few little mini series. One is working with Lily, the yes. six-part series with Lily, which is really about practical and letting everyone see it with a horse from the very start. From the start, yeah. And we're often adding things as well. We have the little insights where if I have an aha moment, of which I've had many this last week, there'll be little videos of me, as well as the full course content, of course, which is, there's loads. And you can comment under every video, I'm there all the time, I'm in there every week answering questions and there is no such thing as a silly question. I'm, I, I want you to know as an instructor, I really care about the relationship between you and your horse. If you feel stuck, if things aren't working for you, celebrating your triumphs with you as well. So I'm very hands-on in the course, so it's not just going to be videos, I'm right there with you every step of the way. And if you are already a Pure Liberty student, if you're one of our alumni members, yes. then watch your email because we also want you to be in this book club. So we've got an offer coming out for you as well. So just check your email for that. Um, and thank you so much for being here. We are just a little over the top of the hour. So really appreciate everyone that has, that has stayed on and is, um, is here with us. So again, thank you. Yes, thank you, YouTube. Thank you, Facebook. Um, any questions that you have, info at horseclass.com. Send it to us there. Um, we're both going to be here so that we can help answer those questions that come in. Um, and also Catherine, who works behind the scenes here at Horse Class, is going to be answering your questions. So we would love to talk to you. We'd love to have you join us in Pure Liberty. And I just have one more thank you, and that is to the spirit of the horse. It's brought all of us together from all over the world. It has changed my life forever. I know it's changed yours. And yeah, thank you to the spirit of the horse, I say. Yeah, yeah, horses are, are absolutely incredible. And we are so grateful to have you here as part of our community and um, to have this amazing community to have these kind of discussions with and to you know share what we get so excited about when we go out and spend a week looking at ponies. Thanks guys. We'll see you soon. Bye everyone. Bye.